All right, thank you. Welcome everyone to the March 16th, uh, 2022 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. My name is Brian Adams, I'm the chair of the committee and the main focus of the meeting tonight is to hear from folks on the three projects uh, that are up for consideration this spring round of funding from the CPC. The Shepherd Barn Rehabilitation Project brought to us by Historic Northampton, the Prospect Place Housing Project brought to us by Valley CDC, and the St. John's uh, Holy Street Redevelopment brought to us by O'Connell. Uh, we just have a few quick items of business to attend to. And then rather than going in order of projects or by project, uh, Sarah has suggested and put out to the, um, to the, the, the world that folks will simply be raising their hands and then we will be calling on those people sort of in the order that their hands are raised. Uh, Pam, Pamela Schwartz will be first. Her hand was raised before the meeting started to, to get in. But Pamela, you can just have to wait for just a moment here while we go through, um, through a couple things. Uh, so that's, again, it's very important for us to hear public comments uh, we spend a lot of taxpayers' money, and it's, and it's uh, useful to know where people stand on the project. So we appreciate everybody who is online joining us this, e this evening uh, with, with, their, with their comments. Uh, when you make comments, we do ask that you state your name, uh, your address, uh, which project you're speaking to, uh, and, that's, that's, and, then, and then do your thing. Before we do that, uh, we always begin each meeting with general public comment. If there's anyone out there that wishes to comment on anything uh, that has to do with stuff other than the three projects that are in front of us. So um, perhaps people can just speak out to that if you are so inclined to do that. Again, this is, doesn't have to do with Shepherd Barn, Prospect Place Housing or the, or the Holly Street Church, but anything regarding to, uh, CPC. Uh, yeah, hi, Brian is Chris. Yes, hi, Chris. Just to, just to note that uh, I'm Chris Hellman. I reside at 625 West Hampton Road in Florence, uh, and I am attending this evening's meeting as a private citizen. Great, thank you, Chris. Anybody else on general CPC stuff? I'm, I'm not, I, I'm seeing the hands raised, but I'm going to assume that those hands are for speaking, speaking to projects. Okay. Uh, we have minutes to approve from November 17th, which Sarah sent us, uh, just sent us. Uh, so um, we're looking for a motion to approve those minutes from a committee motion. member, please. Motion to approve. Thank you, Jeff. A second? A second. Uh, thank you, Dan. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Uh, Sarah, do you, do you need to take us through a roll call on this? Uh, we do. Quick oh, I'm roll sorry, call. hold on. Uh, Linda, Brian, Brian, Linda, this is Linda. Linda, I'm sorry. I didn't have a chance to review them, and I'm wondering if we could put this off till the next meeting. Uh, I'm not sure they, you'll have a quorum, and I don't feel comfortable approving them without having reviewed them. Uh, there is, uh, they, they did come in very late, and uh, is that? Busy week, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, that's fine, not a problem. It's okay? All right, we'll, we will put that off. Thank you, Linda, and uh, uh, we'll make sure to put that on the, on the agenda next time. So, uh, Chair's report, just a couple of, of quick things. One is that um, uh, uh, Chris spoke up that uh, Chris is uh, recru recusing himself from discussion for, for this round. So we're down that, that member. Julia is once again, uh, somewhere in flight from one place to another. So she will be out uh, as well. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Jen is not joining us this evening. So we are down her as well. And Jana from the, our rep from the planning board has taken a leave of absence through the end of this round from both the planning board as well as the CPC. So we are uh, joined tonight with uh, David Whitehill. David, thank you for joining us. Uh, David is the planning board alternate um, and will be stepping in to help us 
uh, with our deliberations. And Dave, is there anything we can do to fill you in? Uh, please, please let us know. So waves from committee members to David and a thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the second thing is, um, is that again, I, I hope folks, a lot of stuff came in um, in the last couple of days from Sarah. So she had a, 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 a busy week. Uh, the two most important things are to recognize that the ask from the, uh, from the Valley CDC went down from 1 million of CPC funds down to $664,068. So that's a significant decrease in ask. Uh, and, I, and I'm hoping people had a chance to, to read the document that, that Wayne sent us. If you didn't, and for, uh, for folks who are, who are tuning in to, to, to comment, the ask from, C, from, uh, from Valley CDC is still a million dollars. It's, it's that the, uh, the, the uh, Planning and Sustainability Department has worked their magic and is able to support funding for the remaining $335,932 from other sources. So the, the ask is still the same. Um, it's just that our portion of the ask is a little bit less. And if in fact we fully funded at that ask, it's able to come up with that additional funding um, that will reach that one, that one million mark. Um, there is method to that madness, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong in this, the 664,068, if we add that to the full request from historic Northampton, that would mean we would be spending every penny of ours, uh, of, our, of our fall, uh, I'm sorry, of, our, of our, the spring amount that we have. Um, that would not leave any for the Holly Street project. If we were in fact going to fully fund all of these three projects, the at, at, full, at full funding requests, the Bridge, the Bridge Road project and the uh, historic Northampton project would come out of our regular CPC funds and the Holly Street project would be bonded. So that's, that's how that has worked if you're, if you're following that. Uh, if, if, if folks just tuning in, if you're confused, join the crowd, we're, we're all a little confused, but Sarah will, will, will help us out with that. The other business not foreseen when the agenda was published that we'll get to at the end of the evening, we'll be going through that bonding process and Sarah will guide us through that and go, and, and go through that. So we'll speak a little bit, a little bit more about that uh, as, as well at that point. Um, so I do believe that's it. And we can get on right now to the, to the public comment session. Um, it should be noted that there were a number of written comments that were uh, submitted on behalf of, uh, of applicants. Um, and uh, I was able to look at three in support of the historic Northampton project and one in support of the Holly Street project. Sarah had a bunch of others that she attempted to send over to us. Uh, I think maybe three on each project, Sarah, is that right? And the system couldn't handle it or the, so we were unable to see those, but at some point Sarah will send, send those off, uh, send those off to us. Um, so we do recognize that we entertain both uh, written comments as well as, as other comments. And I think if folks at the end of the evening still want to write something or know someone wants to write something, feel, feel free to do that. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to move on to the public comment uh, session for this round. And again, we have three projects we're considering. The Shepherd Barn Rehabilitation from Historic Northampton, Prospect Place Housing, uh, which is a bridge, bridge road, bridge road, right? Uh, from Valley CDC and the Holly Street or St. John. Um, uh, redevelopment project. So we're just going to go in, or, or I'm going to go in order and call on folks by the hands that I'm seeing on Zoom, and hopefully that that will work. Um, if folks have never done this before, if you click on your screen on the on the bottom part, it has uh, a little ability for you to raise your hand. So if you can do that, then at at, at some point that would be great. 
Um, so let's begin with who I'm seeing first, and that's uh, Pamela Schwartz. And again, if you can say your name and where you live, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Pamela Schwartz. I live at 22 Columbus Avenue in Northampton. And I'm here to speak about Prospect Place, um, the rehabilitation of the nursing home on Bridge Road. I also feel like I'm, I can't separate my identities as a Northampton resident for, of 29 years and as director of the Western Massachusetts Network to End Homelessness. So I am bringing both selves to you in these couple of minutes um, to say that I am so thrilled about this project and so hopeful about what it offers for Northampton and the, the community as a whole and the surrounding community as it were, but above all Northampton and urge the CPC to fund the requested amount um, for that the Valley CDC is asking. This project is truly a model. It is a model of everything we're working for across the entire region, if not the Commonwealth. Um, it's uh, in what it affords around the size, that the, the difference, the impact it will make in this community, 60 units across a range of incomes from extremely low income to moderate income. That is a model of that mix. The number is just obviously hugely impactful. The location, the accessibility to public transit, that's a model. That's everything that we want. The, 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 no, the plan to make it um, environmentally sustainable, of course, is a model. If you take down the list of what this proposal is suggesting and what a best practice is for affordable housing development, this crosses every T and dots every I. It is such an opportunity for Northampton. It will make such an impact in addressing this extreme dire crisis in the, of the lack of affordable housing. Right now, based on a study that Wayfinders, our largest regional housing provider has done in, from the region, they, they found that we, as of 2020, we had a house, affordable housing gap of 11,000 units in this region alone, projected to rise to 19,000 in the next few years. We have such an urgency to act. And the fact that this project is here and the Valley CDC is here is a blessing to our community. So I, I just can't urge you more strongly to support this to the fullest extent possible. It will make such a difference to so many people in this community. And it really affords us the opportunity to, to provide, to meet this need for 60 households across the spectrum of our community. And I think it will be flagship both for our region and state and provide so much to the people who live here. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Pam. Uh, Bill? <laughs> thank you. I, I, hello, I'm Bill Dwight. I live at 39 Myrtle Street. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm going to speak to the same project as Pam actually. Um, and until last January, I had the privilege to serve Northampton as a city councilor at large. And I'm also a resident of Ward 1. I'm here today, of course, to strongly endorse the request from Valley CDC to redevelop the vacant site of the old Northampton nursing home, which is also in Ward 1. I know the members of this committee are aware of the relatively rare opportunities that exist to fund affordable housing systems here in the city. I, I'm not denigrating all the other worthy applicants you're considering tonight, but I, I wanna emphasize the urgency of this particular request. It's important for us to remember that Northampton voted twice by unprecedented margins to institute the Community Preservation Act, largely inspired by the promise of retention and expansion of affordable housing here in the city. In the 35 years that I've lived here and the 18 years I served on the city council, I mean, one priority has been constant and prominent. To thrive, we need to increase opportunities to live here and stay here. Now, I know all of you are very familiar with uh, your applicant in this instance. You know Valley CDC's record for creating quality, well-maintained housing stock for underserved residents because their successful projects have been funded by this committee. They're a proven local developer with a core mission of 
housing justice as opposed to say a private development firm intent on realizing optimal profit. With Valley's projects, the profit, if you will, is ours and it comes in the form of enrichment of our population and the satisfaction that we're walking the talk. We are manifesting our promises. Opportunities like this are far and few between, as Pam noted, and the need is urgent, as Pam also noted, and becoming more urgent every day. So please considering honoring the full amount of Valley CDC's appeal, and thank you in advance for your thoughtful deliberations. Thank you, Bill. Fran? Uh, still muted, Fran. Need to unmute. Uh, Fran, can you hear us? Okay, you need to un to uh, unmute yourself. There, there we go. I got it. I I had been sitting here clicking on it, and it didn't do anything. But here I am. And I'm also here to speak to the Valley CDC project on Bridge Road. Uh, I'm a neighbor, uh, so I speak from a slightly different perspective from Pamela and Bill, although I want to endorse everything that they've said. I think this project is a once in a lifetime, and I hope very much that the CPC can fund it in its full amount. Um, as a neighbor, I've, I've lived here for a while, seven years now, um, this place has been vacant for 11 years, as you all know. It's an eyesore. We go by it all the time. Uh, it's too bad that it's there. And we have been hoping something would happen. And now the best possible thing is on the horizon. Um, the project that Valley is uh, presenting, uh, it, it really is the best possible thing. It, it's a range of affordability. Um, it's, um, it, it's in a great location for Valley. It's in a great location for Northampton. There's lots of parking. All kinds of these individual pluses are, are in place for this project. Um, and I also want to, I, I don't think I need to remind the committee of this, but Valley CDC has a remarkable reputation for doing a really great job on their uh, housing. Uh, we'll be proud of this place for a long time. All of us neighbors will be proud of it. Um, um, and finally, I just want to second the fact that it's the reuse of a building that has been around for a long time and, and, and that it really addresses in a serious way the uh, affordable housing pro problem in Northampton. Um, so I hope that it can be funded in its full amount. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fran. I think the words of the uh, last two years have been, um, you're muted, we can't hear you. You're muted, we can't hear you. It's uh, the, uh, the, the, the living with Google. Uh, Marvin? Yes, I'm Marvin Ward. I no longer live in Northampton, but I did at one time. I'm now 80 years old and I'm living in an apartment in East Hampton because I cannot deal with keeping up with property anymore. But I'm a, a longtime member of Historic Northampton. And so I want to, I really want to support all three of these products, projects in one way or another. And I hope you can find a good way to balance it out because I, they need to finish up the Shepherd Barn project and they're getting very close to do it. I'm a contributor to that. And I'm also interested in the housing because I'm a low income person living in a low income, low income converted factory in East Hampton. And I waited to get into that specifically and precisely. And finally, the SJCC church is a real, uh, I drawing um, point for the neighborhood and it's right across the street from the Arts Trust 
building, which has just been granted money obtained by uh, Jim McGovern to do their black um, black box theater, which is the uh, it'll be the only one in the area. And uh, you know, I'm I'm mixed feelings about what should be done with SJCC because. I know the architecture of the building and how it was designed and why it was designed that way. And I've been proposing that it really could be easily turned into a nice recital hall. It's the right size, the right acoustic, the right seating capacity, and it's an easy conversion. So, but I would like to, I'm going to try, in fact, I've got a talk, a call in to Jim McGovern to talk about the possibility of getting things for that building in the same way that they got things for the arts, which is just across the street. The, the uh, proposal that uh, OGD is coming up with is try, to try and preserve the building by uh, doing the weather, weather protection that it needs before anything else can be done. And I'm certainly in favor of that, but um, there are other things in the, that I'm not particularly supportive of, namely removing the slate roof to put in an asphalt shingle one. That's a, de that's a degrading of its historic materials. Thank you very much and for considering my suggestions. Thank you, Marvin. Bill Krause? Okay. Hi. Um, yes, I'm Bill Krause. Um, I'm speaking in favor of the uh, St. John Cantius Church application from O'Connell. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the uh, Friends Group, the Friends of St. John Cantius. Um, I, they have engaged, well, so, oh, step back. Um, I am a mission-driven developer and um, consultant who specializes in redeveloping historic buildings. Um, I'm based in Connecticut. I live in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, I've been doing that for 20 years. Um, and have a total of 35 years of commercial real estate, uh, commercial real estate finance and development experience. Um, the friends engaged me and my team uh, in August to analyze uh, the building, NLA St. John Cantius Church, um, for its structural soundness and its uh, suitability for adaptive reuse. Um, we studied the building for several months. O'Connell was very, um, was good enough to let us into the building to do our analysis. Um, I'll just uh, mention my team. So um, uh, my, I brought in a, my uh, historic structural engineer, uh, Beth Ackley, who has 20 years of, um, uh, of engineering experience and specializes in historic buildings. She actually um, is a consultant to um, the State of Historic Preservation Office here in Connecticut. Um, my architect, um, Patrick and Architects, um, Paolo uh, Campo uh, has 20 years experiences doing all kinds of projects, Yale School of Architecture graduate. Um, and I had um, my contractor, um, La Rosa Building Group uh, from Connecticut, who also specializes in redeveloping historic buildings. They have 40 years experience. They're a multi-generational um, family-owned firm. So we, um, we found the building to be uh, structurally sound. It clearly needs maintenance. It is clearly uh, suitable for adaptive reuse to multiple uses. Um, O'Connell's choice of, of doing multifamily residential is a very strong use from a market perspective. Um, however, all of the, um, all the uses that we analyzed, including multifamily, um, require some kind of a subsidy to make the project, make the numbers work. Um, and the issue with um, multifamily is that because that would subdivide the sanctuary of the church, it would not um, qualify for historic tax credits. So that leaves um, you know, the subsidy to, uh, necessarily to come from some other source. CPC seems like a, like a good match. Um, I can't comment on the amount that they're asking for because I, I don't have access to all of their figures. But I can say that all of the uses that we studied um, require you know, some meaningful amount of, uh, of subsidy. So um, 
my team, you know, and I, you know, feel this building is a gem, you know, and can and should be reused. Um, you know, it embodies the um, the heritage of of um, the Polish immigrants that you know came to the city and to the region, you know, in late nineteenth century, early twentieth century, um, and it's a uh, it's a, you know, as you all know, it's a landmark building that defines the character, you know, of that neighborhood. And it uh, adds to the architectural diversity of your downtown. I don't think there are any other um, Romanesque revival buff, buff brick, you know, churches in Northampton. And they're also just very rare in, in uh, Northeast to begin with. Um, so anyway, um, you know, my hope my team's hope is that uh, you can fund this to a level that will make it work for O'Connell. And O'Connell's clearly a developer who is ready, willing, and able to do the project. And it is there in their self-interest to get the project done as soon as possible. So it's a good match there as well. So thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you, Bill. We're on a run of bills here. Uh, and Bill Newman, I you not don't look like the Bill Newman I know, but um, go ahead, please, and give us your name and address, please. Uh, clearly, I'm not Bill Newman, but you seem to have disabled the rename option here. Um, my name is Dale Melcher. I live at 61 Lyman Road, and I want to speak in favor of the Prospect Place project. I agree with everything that Pam and Bill and others have said. But I want to bring my own perspective to it, which is that I have been a part of a circle of care supporting refugee resettlement in Northampton for over four years. And I continue to be involved in that effort. And it's virtually impossible now to settle refugees in Northampton because there simply isn't affordable housing. And the kinds of housing we've been able to find over the past few years, much of it has been not on a bus route, complicating everything for refugees who need to go to English language classes, who need to go to jobs, who need to go to medical appointments. So Prospect Place offers an amazing opportunity to, among other things, help us to actually resettle more refugees in Northampton. They add enormously to the cultural diversity and richness of our town. And um, this property is on a bus line, walking distance to job opportunities, walking distance to the school, walking distance to the Y. It's just a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I urge you to support funding for this project. Great, thank you so much. Uh, number three, Bill. Bill, you need to, un to uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, I know, I just had to find the. Uh, I'm Bill Breitbart, I live at 37 Monroe Street in Northampton. Um, and I also come to speak in favor of the prospect of Valley CDC's Prospect Place project. Um, I have spent uh, 40 years in the field of uh, development and programming in nonprofit affordable housing. Um, and in that time, uh, I have either acted as development consultant or in my time working as the Western Mass Director of CDAC, reviewed projects for financing um, and for provision of technical assistance uh, to make projects come to fruition. So I bring the perspective of a long history of sort of professional involvement in this field. Um, and I, I'm not gonna speak to the need issues. I think they've been very well spoken to already and I don't have anything to add to that. I think as we all know, we have a very, very tough market in Northampton. Um, and even, and, and recently we've had worse rent inflation and a greater shortage than, than all the years that we've been talking about this in the past. What I wanna speak to is the quality of this project in terms of the way uh, we should all look at it and the way the funding sources uh, that are needed uh, to provide the state and federal funds that, the, that will be required to make this project work the way they will look at it. 
And uh, in all my years of reviewing literally dozens of projects, I, I really can't think of one which better ticks all the criteria that we really need to look at when we look at uh, competitive projects competing for funding uh, at the state and federal level. As people have mentioned, uh, the uh, location is excellent. Uh, the site is a six acre site, uh, which provides ample room for uh, the amenities that are needed on the site to, uh, to really provide quality of life for people. Uh, it's the reuse of an existing building, um, which is a very practical and sensible way of uh, spending our money on affordable housing. Um, it's, uh, uh, there'll be plenty of room for parking, plenty of room for other amenities. Um, and uh, as other people have said, we have, a, uh, I know from my experience, we have an extremely high quality developer uh, who's seeking this money that's put together a really, really good development team uh, for the project. Um, and uh, they just have an excellent, Valley CDC, as everyone knows, has an excellent track record in both producing housing and operating housing for uh, low-income families, individuals, and uh, people with special needs in our community. Um, so from the perspective of somebody who uh, has been involved for years and years in uh, evaluating and funding affordable housing projects, I really think that this is the gold standard of projects. Um, and it will be extremely competitive on the state level uh, as it moves through the process of approvals uh, toward uh, final commitments uh, and is able to, to close and move forward into construction. Um, and the commitment of uh, uh, C uh, community preservation funds will not only be an important piece of the funding in and of, in and of itself, but it will also demonstrate the local commitment to this project, um, which is a very, very important part from the perspective of the other funders. Um, in fact, it's required, um, and this will more than meet that burden. So um, you will be leveraging a tremendous amount of other resources that will make this project feasible. Um, so I can't think of a better project in terms of need, in terms of quality, and uh, I really urge the Community Preservation Committee to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Elaine? Hi, I'm Elaine Jandu, and I live in Ward 3, and I support the, I am on the committee of Friends of St. John Cantius, and I totally support them, but I also support Northampton Historical Society, the, the Historical Commission. They are doing a tremendous job. Lori and Betty are amazing and they have done so much with the Historical Society. So I totally support them and their funds for CPA funding. They have done a great job. And I support the Bridge Street Prospect Avenue project because I am, I've lived in Northampton all my life and that portion of this town has been vacant for so long that it's it's nice to see something come up to the plate. So I really support that. But my main concern is St. John Cantius. And I, as I said, I'm a native of Northampton and I've lived here, I'm a native. So I've seen the architecture of downtown Northampton and it just, can't, it's unbelievable to the fact that they could take away this historical building of Northampton away from Northampton that has put so much into Northampton. The Polish immigrants that came here and put so much into this town and just take that away from them, destroying it, it just doesn't sound meaningful. So if CPA funding could help them out by preserving this building, that would be amazing. I, I just think any portion that CPA funding could do 
towards that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Lane. Joanne? Hi, uh, Joanne Campbell, 13 Perkins Avenue, and I am also in Ward 1, where the project is located, and I'm uh, speaking about Prospect Place. Um, I will not uh, repeat what many, many other folks have mentioned, what a great project this is. It does hit all the main points when we're looking at sustainability uh, and reuse. Um, I do want to note um, that finding sites to do affordable housing is extremely difficult. And so finding locations that um, like this one are difficult and Valley is very lucky to manage to get site control of this property. So that's, um, you know, that's key to being able to develop this property. Um, also, I think what Bill Breitbart mentioned too about what the state looks at. And so having support locally from funding sources, whether it's the city directly through some other sources that were mentioned that Wayne has um, commandeered or through CPA and or through CPA, uh, the state really looks at wanting to stretch its federal and state dollars that it manages across the state because some communities don't have the resources or even the, the commitment that Northampton has. And so um, the state looks very uh, keenly upon communities that can put more dollars in, um, and they have thought very highly of Valley over all the years on doing quality projects. So um, I am, of course, 100% in support of this project, and um, I really hope that you'll be able to support it in the amount. Um, I'm happy to hear that the money was reduced because that also makes it a little easier for the committee to, to take a harder look at the dollars that are being asked for. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Ruth? Um, I'm Ruth Elkan, a new resident of Northampton, living at 29 Crabapple in the Lathrop community. So I'm also a neighbor and in Ward 1. Just, I totally support and agree with everything everyone has said in favor of the Bridge Road uh, development. I've just add from another perspective, having been involved in affordable housing in the little tiny town of Pelham on the other side of Amherst, a town of under 3,000 people. Um, this project looks like a great bargain for CPC because the little town of Pelham with no industrial base and practically no business uh, pledged 500,000 to develop a very difficult um, piece of property on a steep slope uh, for affordable housing for only 34 units. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, it's not Sherry. It's, uh, we know you as Devin, but... Uh... It is, Brian. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm borrowing someone else's uh, iPad in the house. Thank you very much. It's Devin Bruce from 46 Columbus. Um, first, thank the CPC for your work, and um, you're in a... You're in a difficult assignment tonight. I signed on to uh, voice support for Valley CDC's project because it's it's almost elegant. It's just really a fine piece of work put together. Um, and uh, also for my sweet spot for historic Northampton, which uh, I've spoken to about over uh, many different times. Um, and Brian hinted in his opening that there was maybe a way to stretch on this round of funding and if you can, I ask you to. This sounds like a, a good set of projects to do that with. Thank you. Thank you, Devin. Uh, Jarrett, we've received your written comments, but certainly go ahead and share your verbal comments with us as well. Thank you. I just wanted to um, say that you don't have an easy road to hoe, and I'm very glad to hear that bonding is a possibility because they, these are all three, I think, really wonderful projects. And I heard a couple of references to once in a lifetime opportunities in regards to the um, housing project. I think that I'll, I'll be glib and say that um, St. John Cantius 
and historic Northampton are once in several lifetimes opportunities um, in that, and I think are, are equally important to the long-term health and uh, vitality of Northampton. Um, I know that there's might be a little reluctance to helping O'Connell um, keep the church uh, and reuse the church. Uh, I, I don't know how familiar the Community Preservation Committee is with the history of this, but the church has come within hair's breadth of being knocked down several times over the past two years. So I'm, I'm really thrilled that O'Connell has looked at the evidence in terms of the, the um, soundness of the building and that they're willing at this point, finally, to uh, come up forward with a proposal that both works for their um, economic interests, but also uh, is something that would be a, a great boon to Northampton to keep that beautiful building there. And I don't want to um, mute myself before saying that I also think that historic Northampton, particularly in recent years, they've been reaching out into the community and reaching also more broadly into Northampton's history to expose stories that haven't been um, as well known as the colonial forefathers. And I think that the completion of the Shepherd Barn project would really um, expand that uh, outreach and provide a place for the community to gather and both uh, explore its past, but also to build a, a, the community for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Carol? Thank you. I'm Carol Newbert. I live at Lathrop Community, a Bridge Road um, neighbor to the, to the um, Prospect Place housing. And I just wanted to make note, I'm sure that the committee has, um, but it would also be of great note to any other funding sources that are sought or grants that are written that the neighbors of this project have spoken positively um, for this, this um, transformation that can happen to the old nursing home. At the previous meeting that was held on the nursing home property, any, uh, from what I heard, the people who had concerns, it was about traffic. It was not about the project itself. And I think that says a lot in a world where we often say that we want certain things to happen, but not in my backyard. The neighbors aren't saying that. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Deborah. Thank you, and thank you to the committee for your hard work. You, I'm hoping you have plenty of money this go round because you have three fabulous projects. Uh, I am Deborah Henson. I live at 118 Franklin Street in Northampton. I'm a relative newcomer. I used to live in Ward 3, and I, in Ward 3, when I landed here in Northampton, I became so fond of the architecture in the neighborhood, in the downtown area, and just throughout the city. But one of my favorite spots to walk by was St. John Cantus Church. So I was also shocked, as many people were, when the prospect of demolition arose. And I just think that the I'm so happy that O'Connell has found a way and the willingness to reverse themselves in this prospect. I, I think this church is an important, not as a church per se, but as a landmark historic building. I think it's a very important part of this fabric of this community. One of the things that drew me to this beautiful little city in New England was just the incredible architecture, which to me is art and I love art and I love the art of this city. So I'm hoping that CPC can find a way to fund this project. And as our expert Bill said, oh, by the way, I don't know if I said I'm the chair of the Friends of St. John Cantius. Sorry, I think many of you know that. 
as our expert Bill said, you know, it does take I think with difficult projects like this, which I've learned a lot about this over the last year or so, it takes private partner partnership, pri private public partnership, I guess, to make it work because this is not an easy development. And I do want to say that if we can keep this church standing, that is what the Friends of St. John Cantius are all about. We want to see this church repurposed preserved. I think having families living in it would be wonderful. And so I'm just really hoping that you can find a way to fund this project. I'm also a member of Historic Northampton. I love the Shepherd's Barn. I wandered around in there a year or so ago. And CPC, the CDC Valley, they're all incredible projects. So I hope you have a lot of money and a way to figure out how to stretch it to the nth degree. So I appreciate your time and thank you for hearing me. <clears throat> thank you, Deborah. Michael? <clears throat> I'm Michael Schwartz. I live in the Lathrop community on Bridge Road. <clears throat> I am so excited by the prospect of that nursing home becoming a real community place. Uh, I think the plans are exciting and it's addressing significant social and environmental issues. I just think it has to be supported. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Kathy? Hi, my name is Kathy Couch. Um, I live at 693 Bridge Road, so just across the street from my neighbors here, Carol, Michael, and Ruth um, in the Lathrop community. But um, so I'm a neighbor of the Prospect Place Project. And I also am a president of the Northampton Community Arts Trust Board. Um, and I came here tonight really to speak in support of uh, Historic Northampton's project. Um, they have been an amazing um, partner to us in the Arts Trust at Holly Street. Uh, really trying to revitalize that end of town. Um, I feel like Betty and Lori are just do an amazing job of um, doing like this amazing alchemy of um, making us excited and really tending to the history of a town um, and understanding of, of adding to the vitality of the current <laughs> city life um, as a way of making us proud and excited of the history of the place as well. Um, the, the work that they do is so important and so um, broadly minded uh, care for the community and the finishing of the Shepherd Barn would be a huge asset to that end of town um, that we're all working so hard to realize, as would protecting um, St. John Cantius. Um, you know, I agree with everybody that you have an extremely challenging job ahead of you um, tonight. And I think it's a really interesting confluence of projects that you're presented with because um, I'm in very full support as a neighbor of the Prospect Place project. Um, very full support of that project. It's very exciting and is such an important need in our community. Those of us involved in the arts um, or at least speaking for myself, I can often feel that um, the arts have done such an amazing job at revitalizing this town over the past number of decades. Um, and I sometimes worry that we've done <laughs> for artists or anyone else who live in this town. So um, the possibility of reusing this space in this building um, for affordable housing that is so vital to our community is also really, really exciting. So um, thank you for considering all of these projects. Um, it's a very, very exciting time in the city that all of these things might be possible. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Shep? Uh, hi, my name is Shep Holcomb. Uh, I live in Arlington, Massachusetts, and I'm a, a Shepherd family descendant. And I just wanted to express my admiration for the work that's been done at Historic Northampton over the past several years and my support for the, the preservation of the Shepherd Barn. Thank you so much. 
Um, other folks, I'm not seeing hands up, uh, but we have a lot of folks who are out there. Is there anyone that else that would like to speak? If so, can you do the hand raising thing or else wave like that? And Sarah or I will try to see who that is. Sarah, are you seeing anybody with the hands up? Uh, I see no waving or I, I, I just unmute. I just unmuted myself because I don't know how to get my picture up here. I've never had this problem with nor other things, but I'd like to speak. My name is Miriam Moss. Okay, Miriam, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I've lived here for 10 years in Northampton. I'm from Pennsylvania. And I became aware within weeks of moving here. Uh, I lived originally within the town and now I live on Bridge Road at the Lathrop community. But I noted from the very beginning that there was a problem for people that did not have adequate housing. And I've, over these decade, have, my husband and I have reached out to the CDC and have totally been impressed by what they have done to increase the number of housing that's available for people who have limited resources. And to think that we could have that kind of thing right in this neighborhood uh, would make me feel particularly pleased. I, I reached out to all of the community organizations and individuals that I knew about uh, that um, can't talk. Um, that were avail were interested in housing, and uh, and this is the most exciting thing that has ever happened. And I just wanted to put my two cents in that say that everybody should be able to live in a comfortable, affordable house in this community. And it looks like the prospect pace is going to offer that. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, other folks, if you're having trouble with a hand raised sign, perhaps just waving. Anybody else out there waving? Sarah or other committee members, can we see? Anyone else doing that? Sarah, do you think we're good to go? I think so. I don't see anybody else. Okay, last chance for waivers here. All right, well, as always, I'm uh, humbled and honored to hear the voices of, of our uh, fellow residents as they speak so eloquently about, um, about all of these different projects. So thank you all for, for participating. You are Welcome to continue with us for the rest of our meeting. Um, we will talk about it in a moment, uh, whether or not we will begin funding recommendations um, tonight. Uh, if we don't tonight, then our next meeting is the first Wednesday of the month in uh, April, which is the first, second, third, fourth. I think it's the sixth, is that right? Uh, I believe so. So if in fact we don't get to funding rec recommendations uh, tonight, you can, as always, join us for any of our, any of our meetings. And it would be the sixth that we would um, get back together again as a committee and uh, deliberate and make those funding recommendations if in fact we don't get to that uh, tonight. So again, thank you for, uh, for your comments and feel free to, 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 to stay with us. Um, last chance for comments. One more. One more going, going, going. It looks like it's a gone. Okay, next up on the agenda is to approve our 2022 community preservation plan. For folks who are sticking with us from the community, we have a, we periodically update the preservation plan, which um, I think uh, mainly serves as guidance to us in making funding recommendations, but also uh, guidance 
to those who are seeking funding from, from, this, from the CPC. Uh, Sarah's been working hard and we've, as a committee, have been offering input into the 2022 Community Preservation Plan. Um, Sarah added a couple of things that are out there to what we looked at a couple weeks ago. And uh, the first I think is um, the decision guidelines for Northampton CPA projects. That's a document that Sarah sent to us a little late, but that would be in, included in the, in the plan. It goes through the general criteria for all projects and then specific criteria for open space, recreation, housing, and historic preservation. And this, we, uh, I think, gave a thumbs up to Sarah, would serve as a helpful checklist for us as we're going through different projects and allow us to check off some of those, some of those boxes. Uh, so that would be added to the, to the, to the plan. It's not, not something that, that, that we've seen. The other thing I think that would be added, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is uh, the, the memo that we got from Wayne from Planning and Sustainability, looking at these energy performance conditions for any new public housing projects, as well as the affordability conditions. And I think Sarah's going to modify the plan to include those. Is that is that correct, Sarah? I... So I was planning just to incorporate those by reference since they may change. Um, so you can see that included in the um, housing section of the evaluation criteria, where it says is leader Energy Star certified, complies with energy stretch code, and has a very low FERS rating and it's fossil fuel free, and this is the new part, or meets city energy and sustainability performance standards for affordable housing projects with significant city funding. So I provided that background document just so you all could take a look at it. Great, thank you, Sarah. There, is there anything else that is, uh, other than the, those, those two different documents that I referenced that's gonna be included in the CPC plan? Uh, no other changes from the, the last version of the, the plan that I had sent out. We didn't get any additional public comments uh, by email. Okay. Uh, committee members, do we feel comfortable voting on the acceptance of this uh, or approval of our community preservation plan? Do people have comments on it? Is this looks like we're, we're good to go? Um, Jeff, any comments? No, I'm, I'm comfortable voting on it. Uh, Linda? I'm sorry to be a stick in the mud again. Um, I'm comfortable with the overall plan, but the criteria, I just have not had a chance to look at it. So I'd be, if that portion could be deferred, but the overall plan, um, could be could be voted on it. that that I'd be good with, and I think it, in terms of what Sarah sent to us, there were just a couple of very minor changes that Sarah was making, and in addition of and then a, some some spelling stuff. So so Linda, you're you're comfortable with the overall thing, and but deferring the the addition of the of the checklist. That that's right. Okay, uh, and, Martha. Uh, Brian, I was just going to say that every, just so everyone's clear, the, the criteria and decision guidelines that I put together are basically just a distillation of the, the plan as a whole in, in two pages. Mm -hmm. uh, three pages. Three pages. Uh, Martha? I have reviewed the criteria and I am comfortable voting on it. Uh, Dan? Ready to vote. David, we wouldn't want to put you on the spot in this case, but I don't know if you've had a chance to review the plan or Yeah, just not. give me about three minutes. And uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope it doesn't uh, ruin any quorum rules, but I will abstain. Sarah, is that okay to have an abstention? Yeah, the, yeah that's fine. Okay, all right, good. So Linda's asking that we sort of defer the checklist 
but approve everything else. So I think that's sort of a, a, a friendly amendment. Is that, is that okay, Sarah, if we? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, the, the plan from here on out um, is to get this to a designer just to make this an attractive, readable plan. It will still be in Word, so we can still make edits whenever we need to, but I'll at least get the ball rolling to, to get that process started and get it online. But we can continue to make edits to the decision guidelines or any other piece uh, at any time moving forward. Great, thank you for all the work that you've put into this, Sarah. So um, is there a motion to approve the community preservation plan, uh, perhaps minus the criteria checklist, which we'll have a little more chance to look at and approve at the next meeting. Uh, so is there a motion on the floor to do that? So moved. Thank you, Jeff. A second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Sarah, want to take us through? Um, Dan? Yes. And David, you already said you're abstaining. Linda? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Great, thank you. And again, folks hanging in there with us, um, it would, if you're looking for uh, more information about the, the, the CPC and information that guides us in our decision making, uh, it's, it's a well put together document. It's a little long. I think we're looking at 60 pages or something, but it's a really testament to the good work that the city does in, in, uh, in providing. Um, so much quality funding to a whole wide range of, of, uh, of, 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 of different issues. Uh, I'm gonna suggest that, that we reverse order with the beginning of the funding recommendations and put other business not foreseen because in this case, I think it would, it would be useful for Sarah to guide us through um, the bonding issues and the two documents that she sent and hopefully folks can take a look at that. But if Sarah can sort of reiterate what the, bu the budgetary concerns are, um, maybe go over once again why the request for Valley CDC was, was dropped to the 664,000, and then go over both our bonding uh, capacity uh, as well as the um, uh, what what bonding the Holly Street project would mean for us? Sure. Uh, so I guess start with a really quick overview of the finances for the remainder of the fiscal year. Um, we did get some excess state match, but unfortunately, we are not able to access that for funding until the books for FY22 will be closed out. That will happen in late August. So that will create some additional funding for next fiscal year, but it doesn't help us in any way now. Um, and what Wayne has provided regarding the reduced request for the Valley CDC project is essentially tapping all of the available cash for the remainder of FY22 for uh, the amount that Wayne's provided in that memo. And as well as the historic Northampton Shepherd Barn project, he, he was assuming that that, that might be funded, uh, and then uh, leaving any potential bonding capacity for the Holly Street Church project. Any, any questions about any of that? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, is there? Um, a reason why, other than um, math, why um, it would be preferable to bond the Holly Street project rather than the Prospect Place project, and cannot can Prospect Place not be bonded because of the other funding restrictions? Uh, so, a couple different answers. There's a there are some limitations on bonding. Um, that don't exist for cash allocations of projects. So essentially the, the bond is not for the work that's being done, but it's for the acquisition of the city's real property interests. So we would need to obtain a hard value of what the affordab affordability restriction is worth 
Um, we did ask Valley CDC about that. Um, their appraisal appraiser that had prepared their initial uh, appraisal report declined to do that. So they were having some challenges obtaining that. You know, clearly the, the value of the project is more that's being than is being requested, but due to those bonding constraints, it, it um, poses some issues. Um, and in bonding for one project rather than a mix of two is a little bit easier. Um, so it, it's, it was just a, beneficial to be able to tap into those CDBG and other funds for that project, which wasn't a possibility for any of the others. So it was just a little bit cleaner. So you know, if, this, if the CPC recommends bonding and city council approves it, it will just be for one project rather than a mix of them. Uh, Sarah, can, can you talk a little bit about the appraisal that the Holy that O'Connells are trying to get on the Holy Street site and how to uh, figure out what the differential is with or without a historic preservation, how that's relevant to us. Sure. Um, and so I, I've, and I've been working yeah. with, uh, yes, I've been working with O'Connell on um, having them obtain an appraisal for the value of the historic preservation restriction. Again, that, that's the same as what we just discussed with the prospect place project. The, the city will only be able to bond for the value of the real property interest that's being acquired. And in that case, that will be the historic preservation restriction. I, I do not know, and O'Connell doesn't know at this point, what that will be uh, valued at. Um, they, ex they expect to have that no later than April 21st. They had a 45 day engagement period for their appraiser. That that's the very last day. So they're hoping to have it before then. Um, so if it comes in it, Assuming that the Community Preservation Committee recommends funding of the entire amount, which is reduced to half a million at this point, um, if, if the appraisal of the historic preservation restriction, which is essentially the, um, the difference between the full market, uh, highest and best use of the property, minus the, um, the value of the property with the restriction on it, you know, if that comes in at half a million dollars or more, uh, we can move forward with a bonding recommendation for the full amount. If it comes in at less than that, um, it still can move forward to council, but it will it will just be a little bit more complicated. We'll be we would be recommending bonding for the, the real property interest and then separating the the work that's being done as long as the committee finds that that's in the public interest and is something that should be recommended in, into sort of a, a separate project that would need to be pushed to next fiscal year. Questions for Sarah about, about this stuff? Uh, Dan? Uh, thank you. Thanks, Brent. Uh, Sarah, I uh, just want to make sure I'm following the numbers correctly. So the, the current ask for the Valley CDC affordable housing project is 664,000, Shepherd Barn 173,000, and, and for preserving the church, 500,000. Uh, so that's, that's 1,337,000 to fund, fully fund all three projects at, at their, their ask. Your document says the estimated amount remaining to spend on regular projects is 1.8 million and, and change. And you're saying the state match is, is part of that number and, that, and those, those funds haven't been received yet? Is, is that right? Uh, so we have about eight eight oh eight in cash available for the remainder of FY twenty two. When you include the administrative funds that were unspent, um, then that that ups that a little bit more. So the revised request essentially for the for prospect place essentially taps every penny of that when you add in the historic Northampton project. Okay. Um, and then you know the the carryover. Um, so the state match above estimate um, will be one, a little bit more than 170,000. Um, so we'll be starting off fiscal year 23 with 170,000 without any fiscal year 23 revenue being accounted for. I see. So we can fully fund all three projects. We would just need to, for Prospect Place, Shepherd Barn, use our remaining funds for the fiscal year and, and, and uh, look to bonding for preserving the church. That's correct. So the, the committee has more than enough bonding capacity to be able to do that. 
um, but we just don't have enough cash on hand to be able to fund them. We haven't bonded in, in some time. Um, if you take a look at the, uh, the bonding capacity spreadsheet that I sent out, which I can actually share, can you, uh, you can see that, that our, our current bonding obligations are going to be ending in FY27. So here we are in FY22. So you can see what's already been allocated to the Pulaski Park and Florence Fields bonds. This is going to go down every year through FY27, at which point the committee won't have any more bonding obligations moving forward. Um, so we, we can't bond. So we, we have to base our, our bonding amount based on the, the CPA income projections. We, we can't count on this. Um, I'm sorry, the, the local revenue only income projections, we can't, um, we can't count the state match because that's not guaranteed. Um, so the, this is the total, this is the maximum amount that you would be able to bond at this point. Sarah, the only thing we're bonding, or the only thing we have current bonding obligations for at this point is uh, Florence Fields and, uh, is that correct? Florence Fields and Pulaski Park. And Pulaski Park. Okay. So this includes both of those projects. And we have five more years, no, six more years of that. Uh, so we're halfway through FY22 at this point, so that just these moving forward. Uh, with the one more at fiscal year 23 as well, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you briefly look at the, that the, or put up the other sheet that you gave us the the um, regarding the um, the Holly Street project what, what what that would mean for us if we were to bond all right so this shows you know I you can and I sent this out to everybody in its Excel spreadsheet. You can play with the numbers if you want to. Um, so we're using an assumed three and a half percent interest rate at the guidance of the city's finance director. If anything, that's a little high. It will probably come in lower than that, although who knows what's going to happen between now and the time we actually um, move forward with the bond. So I put in half a million dollars principal, um, just five years to play with um, due to the, the pretty small amount we wouldn't need to move forward with like a 10 or 15 year bond like we have in the past. So this would show the, the debt service that, that the committee would be um, having every year. So that's well below the, the numbers that were shown in the other chart. So in five, so really within five years, we would be debt free for all, if we were to bond, uh, or even if we weren't, we would be debt free at the end of five years or five and a half years, is that correct? Yeah, about that. I mean, it does take some time to go through the bonding process. So it, this might extend into year six, but you, yeah, that, that's pretty much accurate. And if we were to bond at 500,000, we would end up paying 552,000. Correct, at three and a half percent. If it if the interest rate was lower than that, it would be low. Any questions for Sarah about this? Yeah, Sarah, who picks up the... Um, costs associated with the bonds and how much might that, would you estimate that would be? Uh, like the anticipatory notes and those types of things. I think it's it's pretty incidental. Um, that's, I can double check, but it, it most likely is covered in this. Does covered in, in this? In, it, it would, so in the overall figure, it would most likely be captured. Thanks. Martha? But, but I can, I'll double check on that one. I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, how, how uh, related to your um, comment about the time that it takes to kind of get this all together, is that the availability of funds, will that work with a timeline for construction on this project? Uh, it should. So before the bond is fully executed, the city obtains a bond anticipatory note which has a much faster timeline. Other questions for Sarah? Sarah, where, 
where are we at with um, approval or contract signature for the um, Franklin Street project and the Michelson project? Uh, we have we do not have executed contracts for either one of those projects at this point, uh, but that doesn't change the committee's overall funding availability. Once the funds are approved by city council, those are dedicated to that project, and and until then, unless an applicant says that they they don't need the remainder of the funds, then they hang out in an account. Uh, and do you have updates on those two projects for us? That uh, so Franklin Street has closed on the property. Uh, they provide an updated budget. They're still working on um, some additional background work, reviewing the contract in detail. We need a mortgage with them uh, before things move forward, but it, the, the wheels are turning there. Um, and it, on the Main Street project, I don't have an update. The, the Michelson project, no update? No update there. And they're sitting on the contract and have not communicated with you whether they are uh, interested in a historic preservation or not. Is that correct? Uh, they, they were reviewing it with their attorney last I had heard, which was the beginning of February. So I, no additional updates beyond that. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, any other questions for Sarah about um, the bonding or our finances or any of these other projects? And, and just to reiterate that everything I just showed you assumes that the appraisal of the historic preservation restriction will meet or exceed the amount that uh, O'Connell is requesting. If it doesn't, we will not be able to fund the portion of the project that exceeds that value at this point. You know, we could, we could make it clear to O'Connell if that's the way the committee wants to move forward that it, it's something that we would put forward next fiscal year, but it could not move forward at this point. Oh, only the value portion of the historic preservation restriction. Uh, is there a way, Sarah, to, um, at least speaking for myself, it would be very useful for me to know what the value of that historic preservation is when we are doing our deliberations. Is there um, a way? There, there's them. not. I mean, we, we have to wait for their appraisal to come back. There's no way to know otherwise. Is, is there a way to uh, encourage them to fast track that if there's any way possible? I'm, so they, they've engaged an appraiser and they're working on it. So they, they've done everything they can. Okay. They're point. aware of when we're yeah, yeah, and they 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 know the timeline and the constraints on that, and then and and they also know that some of the funding may be delayed until next fiscal year. Okay. Uh, sorry, this is this. I'm just asking out of ignorance. Why is this based on an appraisal, and not just the value of the work? So we we have to base it on an appraiser appraisal because it's being bonded um, under state law. The the city is only able to bond for private projects if, if a real property interest is being acquired. If this were being done strictly with cash, the, this discussion wouldn't, wouldn't need to be happening. Got it, thanks. And also apologies if this was already discussed, but I'm a little bit not in the uh, practice of all this uh, way of thinking right now. And I don't have the Excel sheet. Um, where are we on category allocation? Uh, so we are... Great question. Thank you, David, for reminding us of that. And in fact, we need the set asides for um, for uh, our our category that we're not looking at, which is the open space. Is that does that change our funding? Uh, it doesn't. That. That uh, account is empty at this point. So the only set aside account that has any funding in it at this point is historic preservation. Okay. And how much set aside is in that? That is uh, $98,489. Okay. So, uh, so David, that does would that be answer your question? And then here, okay. here's the overall funding breakdown. 
but in terms of allocation uh, for this round, we have met the set-asides for open space. We have met the set-asides already for affordable housing. Uh, and it is the historic preservation one that we have not met, but would, would meet if in fact we fully fund or fund to the 98,000, whatever it is for uh, historic Northampton. Is, is that correct? Correct. Great. Any other questions? For Sarah. Okay. Any other business since we sort of flip agenda items a little bit? Any other business that committee members have not foreseen when the agenda was published? All right. So we have the opportunity now to, uh, it is 8.23 either to begin funding recommendations uh, or, to, uh, or to put that, uh, put that off to three weeks from now, the first Wednesday in April, which is when we meet again. Uh, let me remind committee members that uh, in the past, we felt that to do due diligence and justice two recommendations that we do all of that in one evening. That if we get halfway through something and we put it off for three weeks, then um, some of that discussion gets lost and it's best to try to tackle that in one evening. I'm not suggesting we can't do that now, but that's just something to think about. The other issue is that we're without that uh, assessment of what a historic preservation is worth for the, uh, for the Holly Street project. We may or we may not have that uh, available to us in three weeks, but we definitely do not have that available um, to us now. So the question now is, do we wanna begin funding recommendations or do we wanna put that off for, um, for three weeks until our next meeting? Um, so it's just uh, thoughts on that, Martha? Uh I actually am not going to be able to attend the next meeting, but so I probably shouldn't weigh in, but I, I agree with you, Brian, what you said. I think it is better to do it all in one meeting devoted to that subject because the deliberations are often long and you don't want to cut them off. Well, we will miss you and in that meeting in three weeks. Uh, Jeff? If the committee doesn't have that, that figure at the April 6th meeting, um, and would you, you know, you could look at doing that on, on April 13th or April 20th as well. I'm just, I'm foreseeing that it may be difficult to have the, the discussion if you don't know the details of how much the project can be funded for. There, there I would also really appreciate having Martha's perspective on this, as well as the couple of missing uh, committee members. Um, but particularly if Martha cannot be at the next meeting on the 6th, I think your historic preservation knowledge would be quite valuable to us. Thank you, Linda. It puts the pressure on, but thank you. <laughs> um, Jeff, your thoughts? I'm sensitive to what Linda said about um, <clears throat> we're down a couple of people. So I, I kind of like to have the, the full um committee as much as we can do that weigh in on this as important as all of these are and i agree uh we can't <clears throat> we can't do all three projects justice with the remaining time that we have tonight and i know we've gone late in the past um <clears throat> but i'm in no position right now to go late this particular session so um if we have to defer then let's defer uh, Dan? I, I let Sarah know a few weeks ago, I also have a conflict on, on April 6th. So I'm happy to go late tonight if, if, if there are enough of us to move forward. I, I think we've got two projects where we have enough information to move forward on funding and a, a third that, that may take more time. David? Uh, well, I only found out about three, four hours ago that I was going to be at this meeting, so I haven't really read in depth any of these uh, at this point, although they all sound like great projects. 
Uh, but out of respect for Jeff's schedule, I'd like to not go too late. So there's sort of mixed stuff that is that is out there. I think um, uh, what I might propose is that um, we delay funding recommendations until our third Wednesday in uh, April, so that we, in the hopes that we have that. Um, that Holly Street Historic Preservation Assessment uh, or appraisal uh, back to us. Uh, and that would be the uh, first, second, third, fourth, the sixth. That would be the 20th, I believe. Is that correct, Sarah? Someone have a calendar? April 20th. Um, does that work with committee members' schedules? I mean, if Martha's not going to be here next week and Jeff is not, I mean, in three weeks and Jeff is not going to be here in three weeks. Uh, it would give us, us a, a little bias, a little more time with a, with a full round. I mean, there's some, uh, you know, the expertise of, of Martha and Jeff would be, would be sorely missed. So my recommendation was that, I know it's a long ways off, but we put deliberation off until the, until the 20th, uh, is, is that acceptable to folks? Uh, Martha, can you be here on the 20th? I can, and Sarah, you had mentioned the 21st for that deadline on the preservation restriction value. Uh, yeah, so O'Connell's had given their, um, you know, when, when they contracted with them to do the work, they had a 45 day period um, so the end of that is the 21st. So that, that would be the last day that, that something would need to come in. So hopefully it will be in well before that. And we do communicate with them that we're obviously switching the schedule so that maybe they can apply some pressure. Yes, I can do that. One day seems more reasonable than, uh, than two weeks. Uh, Dan, your your thoughts? Is this acceptable to you to put the debate off? Yeah, I'm 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 good for the twentieth. Linda, yeah, I think that's I think that's great. Uh, Jeff, yes. David, okay. Uh, Sarah, I don't think you need to. We need to take a vote on this. Is that right? No, we can no, just, agree. just Does this mean we will have no meeting uh, on the? Six, fifth, whatever, fourth. Uh, and, and we'll just wait to get back until the 20th. Yeah, so recommendations are really the only business item. So I, unless someone else has some other agenda that may need to be taken up, I wouldn't see the need to meet on April 6th. There's two items that we're deferring from tonight's meeting, the checklist, and the minutes. The check, thank you for reminding us of that, uh, Martha. The checklist, the minutes, and then our funding recommendations. And, uh, is, that, is that correct? Those, those would be the three items on that, on that agenda. Uh, so we're good to go on that, yes? Okay, so those of you that have hung, up, hung in with us, community members for this long waiting for Funding recommendations. Sorry to disappoint, but we're attempting to do our due diligence and um, and give it the time and energy that we have. So uh, please feel free to rejoin us on Wednesday, April the twentieth. It's hard to believe it'll be April twentieth in a month, um, a little over a month, when we re meet again. Uh, on that note, again, thank you, David, for a, a four hours notice uh, joining us. And, uh, and that'll, this will give you ample time now to read, uh, five weeks, I guess it is, to read and get up, up to speed. And, um, and Sarah, I'm sure can, or I can help you in, in uh, if, if you have questions about that. Otherwise, I think if we're, if we're good to go, there, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Linda, a second? Second. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Sarah, I don't think you need a vote on this, do you? Oh. We can all just wave goodbye to each <laughs> other. And once again, thank you community folks for speaking up and please join us again.